Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. And I have a very interesting show today. You know, we came across Mr. Srikar Sam Yaruva. We're going to call him Sam in the interview today. He's the founder and CEO of PyCube. And let me tell you, this company was founded back in 2011. And as you know from watching the show, we love to bring on very talented experts, people that are really innovating and people who, that are taking technology to the next level. And when we find an entrepreneur and a team and a company that really is changing the dynamic, changing the conversation in their particular space. And in this particular space, we're talking about asset management solutions for the healthcare industry. I mean, it's a burgeoning business. It's so important. We're talking about biomedical. We're talking about clinical engineering. This is heady stuff. And when we were able to get Sam on the show, I said, let's book him because this is really fascinating what PyGube is doing. So Sam, welcome to the dot-com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Oh, thank you, Andy. Thanks for the warm welcome and uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah, it's really great to have you. I mean, when we talk about asset management and for the people watching the show, you know, we talk about protecting your assets all the time. It's so important. And when you have an opportunity as a company to maybe even bring in an outside firm to help you with your asset management through an application or through a software, it's a great way to go. It's a great thing to think about, but I don't want to give all the details away. I'm going to let, of course, Sam talk about it a little bit. So Sam, before we get started, let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet. Tell us what PyCube is all about, and then we're going to go. Well, uh, <clears throat> PyCube is a innovative uh, solution provider in hospitals. We uh, we cater to the hospitals in continental United States, not just hospitals. We are getting into life sciences. Um, we are trying to we we are we believe that technology doesn't change uh, doesn't sell. You know, you don't like technology, but solutions do. You need to have the right business model. Uh, you have to take these solutions, uh, cost-effective solutions, where people are able to accept them. People are able to actually use them for their use cases properly. And uh, that is what we are here uh, to do. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Of course, you offer strong analytics. You offer a dashboard and real easy reporting for your clients. But before we get into that, let's talk about it because we're talking about sort of protecting assets. We're talking about asset management. In the healthcare and biomedical and clinical sort of area, what assets are we actually talking about? This could be any kinds of assets. I mean, um, so what we are trying to do is, um, you know, first I, I think for your audience and for everyone to understand, hospitals, you might have heard this phrase that uh, healthcare is broken. Um, you might have heard about, hey, the staff is so stressed. You know, COVID really stressed out people uh, and especially the hospital staff, they were stressed out. They took care of so many people that they could not even understand. And I believe after talking to a lot of hospitals, you you still see the, uh, uh, the reminiscence of uh, taking care of the stress that the uh, nurses have. People are leaving, they're not able to come in. There are a lot of different complicated mechanisms that are happening right now. And uh, hospitals, you have to understand hospitals in America. They are, you know, there are 87% of hospitals approximately are non-profit. They're not for profit, they're non-profit. Um, when they are actually working, they have a single cost, take care of my patients. They do take care of patients, but they're stressed out. There are a lot of people coming in. What happens when you actually have that, you need different kinds of assets, different kinds of tools, different kinds of stuff to take care of the patients. It could be a gastroenterology, it could be a cardiology, it could be an ER. You need different things. It could be a pump that actually gives you an IV. It could be a stretcher. It could be a, 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 any kind of a biomedical asset that actually helps stop your bleeding or bring down your blood pressure while you're doing an open heart surgery. There could be many kinds of things. What happens when you're in a stressful situation, the assets move. It's an interesting dynamic in these businesses, in the hospitals. The hospitals, when the patient comes in and is, stress, is stressed out or is in a very bad situation, 
you use these things and the um, doctors take care of them, but it moves with you. It moves, the assets move with you from the ER to uh, OR, operation room theater. From there, it moves to a patient room. When they're moving, when the next guy comes in, you don't have the assets in the right place. And then you feel like, oh, I have less number of assets. And then you start going by, by more. What happens over the period of time is hospitals end up buying a lot more assets than what is required. And if you're able to manage these things properly, then you're able to cut costs and hence you can use that whatever money is saved into the thing that they're supposed to be doing, taking care of patients. So we come up with innovative solutions and cost affordable solutions that are scalable, that are accessible to the customer at the right price point and solve those problems so the money can be used back into the patient care. Yeah, I love it, Sam. You know, when we think about a UI and we think about interfaces, sometimes what comes to mind is that they get a little disruptive on existing workflows. But in your particular case, you've been able to really streamline this interface to make it really easy to use. And not only does it not disrupt the existing workflow, it makes the workflows even better. Let's talk about that. So the the workflows, uh, so that is, uh, you're absolutely right. Um, what happens as we moved from technology to technology over the years, um, the the patience that a consumer has, has come down. That means the, the patience that you have on a particular website is six seconds, I believe. If six seconds, if you don't open up a particular website, you're lost, you go to the next one. In hospitals, the nurses are have a even lesser time. So what we do is we try to make those flows as, as one click as possible. With one click of a button, you're able to change the process. Do everything in the back end and make it very easy for the hospitals. In, in today's world, when they're so busy, when you're providing them solutions, SaaS-based solutions to the customers, especially in hospitals, you have to be cognizant of the fact that they don't have the time. At the same time, they have a lot of things to take care of. What if, if you're able to take care of a lot of things in the backside, but give them a one click to get things done? So that is the direction in which we are going to make it as easy as possible for the customers so that they can adopt. There is also another saying uh, that no matter how good your technology is, if it's not accessible and uh, if it's not usable, no one is going to use it. So that's what we are trying to see if you can increase the adoption rate from the customer side, at the same time, make it easy for the customers to actually adopt these technologies that are coming in. That is job well done. Yeah, it's so interesting. Have you, you've integrated RFID, asset tracking technology. Let's talk about that because that's really an amazing thing that your system offers that really helps in processing automation and really even reducing patient wait times, which is incredible. Yes, um, that is an interesting, we've researched the market, um, well, we've gone around and understood what kind of technologies are available. I have, to, I have to point out an interesting fact. RFID is not a new technology, it's a mature technology. Apparently, RFID was used in 1945 during uh, the World War II. It seems when the planes were flying from the top, um, the, uh, the Allied soldiers had to see who is friend and who is foe. They put RFID to understand, you know, back then they started using RFID. Since then, there were leaps and bounds of technology changes that happened. So people, everyone in the hospitals also understand RFID. But as we said, this is a mature technology and the passive RFID can be used anywhere. But no one has taken those technologies available for a long time. They were always looking at a shining ball at this point of time. But these kind of mature technologies can be used you can change the business model and create solutions through these cost-effective solutions that has been in the market for a long period of time and provide solutions that are usable. That's a, a game changer. And that's that's exactly what we're trying to do. Uh, bringing the right technologies together, forming the right solutions, and then providing the solutions in the right manner to the customers. That's that's exactly what PyCube is doing at this point. Yeah, I love it. PyCube is a leader, of course. We've spoken about the non-invasive <laughs> Uh, to the current workflow. We, 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 of course, know this is a cloud-based 
you know, technology platform. But one thing that comes to mind when we start talking about healthcare and everything else that you're involved with is security. And I know that your system offers a better security component with regard to safeguarding data. Let's talk about yes. that and how important that is to your team. Yes. So um, security is the first thing that comes to everyone's mind, um, especially in the hospital settings or in a compliance environment, we're worried about it. Let's take a step back. What is security? What does secure mean, right? You have to look at things in a comprehensive manner. What we have done is we are a HIPAA compliant company. We are a SOC 2 compliant company and we take security very seriously. But we look at security from a comprehensive angle, not from a pointed angle. So um, what is that we actually store? In cloud, that is very important because the first question comes to mind is where is my data getting stored? But what if you delineate what is being stored versus what is needed to get your work done. So we take that metadata, only the metadata, and start working on our processes. And the rest of the data is with the customers without having any effect. That helps the customer sleep well at night because cloud-based solutions can be used for their uh, scalability. At the same time, they don't, they're not worried about the data being somewhere else. So that that changes the game and you can you don't have to worry too much about that. So we have architected and designed in such a way that we are able to move to the customers without, if you call data the gold, we don't touch your gold, but just have the metadata pound route. And that helps everyone that. Yeah, that's so ingenious the way your team has put that together. And of course, that leads me to talk about ActiveView, which is super cool because something that's very interesting is you're using AI-driven technology that really captures data from various sources like like sensors and other things to really give more accurate information. Let's talk about ActiveView and how important AI-driven technology is to sort of this modern, scalable, and modular system that you've been able to put together so effectively. Yes, um, <clears throat> we are excited about um, AI because AI, you have to um, uh, look at it as a, a set of 500 people or 1,000 people sitting right next to you and all the minds working at the same time, right? <laughs> That's you could, you could actually put it from that perspective, right? It's not just you thinking. You have a set of group of people who are working with you as well. Now, technology is changing so far. You know the generative AI has come up. They are going into uh, general use of that. Things move so fast. And um, if you're not able to, um, we believe that if the markets don't keep up with the changing technology, then you, you're left behind. Give it, I'll give you an example. In January, when the AI, Jan, December, January timeframe, not long back, when generative AI was created, there are four to five versions that came about which are exponentially more smarter and you know exponentially more powerful than what they were. You're able to actually talk about certain things. The integrations are faster. They, the mechanisms to do different things are faster. In a company, when you have these kind of methodologies where you're able to integrate and you're able to predict certain things ahead of time, that helps the time it takes for the, the customers of ours, which takes sometimes six months, eight months. We are able to bring it down in one day or within two hours. All the output is given within two hours and that excites us because that not only gives you a strategical advantage, it gives you a tactical advantage, it gives you not just your brain, but the market's brain. In a way, what you're doing is you're digitizing knowledge. And when you're getting the market data around it, it, it helps the product evolve a lot faster and the customer's able to use it a lot more than what they, they thought it would be. That's what we're excited about. Yeah, I love it. Of course, it keeps on getting better, keeps on improving. Yes. For the people watching the show, for the entrepreneurs watching the show, you always hear us talk about constant and never-ending improvement making your company better, using technology to improve your offering to your clients. And one thing that I really wanted to speak to you about, Sam, because I know you're a leader in the field, is biomedicine. I mean, the biomedical field is just going bananas. It's just growing and growing at an exponential case, an exponential rate. And you have a solution that helps biomedical engineers find their assets and, and you have a system to really help them manage their inventory, which then 
also improves their efficiency. And we know that improving efficiency also increases and improves your bottom line. So let's talk about your your system from PyCube for the biomedical engineers to find their assets. Yes. So that's... uh, so I, I wanted to give you a pretext of this um, to understand how the biomedical engineering works. So on an average, we have uh, we have a project called Atlas of Biomedical Assets. We have collected all the different kinds of assets from the market, what kind of vendors, where, who they are and whatnot. Um, imagine, um, but in a, in a hospital, there are only a handful of biomeds who are taking care of all these assets. No single human being can actually take care of you know, 500 different categories of assets that are used because you don't have the skill set. Example, you could have a, a handyman who is good at repairing a Samsung fridge. Maybe he'll repair an LG fridge. Maybe he'll repair something else. But imagine he has to repair HVAC. He has to repair um, fridge. He has to repair a TV. He has to repair all kinds of things. He can figure things out, but having the knowledge is tough. So we are coming up with a solution for them where you're able to figure out the AI system that we are uh, uh, we are releasing is going to figure out what is this particular asset? How are you going to see that? How are you going to actually repair it? What are the best practices around it? So we have digitized that knowledge that is in the market and we are taking it into the market as well. So that the biomed can, can use it. And also the they are very stressed out from not able to find assets. So they're here, biomedical guys keep moving around to find the assets in the market. So they have to repair them ahead of time. Example, I don't want to use, you would not want to use a particular asset that is not your car, which is not oil change for the last two years. You don't know what's going to happen. So that's that's that important, right? If a particular asset within the hospital system, if it's not maintained preventatively, preventative maintenance like oil change in the car, if you're not maintaining it, you don't know how it's going to react when it's used on the patient again. So that's important. So they keep running around to see if they can find this particular asset and if they're able to repair it ahead of time or at least preventatively maintain it ahead of time so the patients are not affected. And they can't find them. Sometimes it takes about four months to find a particular asset, four or five months, I'm not kidding. And our solution can find it within, one of the customers was telling us that um, the biomeds are going to use our guns and solutions that we are providing on RFID scanners. They're going to hold it and sleep it at night because they were able to find it within 20 minutes. And that changes, that brings down the stress, that brings down the process that they have to follow, and it makes their life more efficient. And also the system is able to provide more knowledge and training to these guys at the same time so that the system's assets are maintained properly. That would be, we are hoping, can be improved as we move forward and make their lives more easy uh, or more make their lives more simpler in this case, I guess. Yeah, I love it, Sam. You know, we think about it and... We've talked about some heady stuff here, AI and technology and everything else that you guys are sort of leading the field in. But when we really break it down, you and your team have a commitment sort to the patient. I mean, all yes. the things that you're doing really is making the service to the patient, the the opportunity for the patient to get better health care improved. So when you wake up in the morning, is that sort of your your go mission with you and your team is let's do all this sort of high tech stuff to make sure that the patients get the best care and we can help their lives with regard to their health. Yes. And that's that's the ultimate goal, right? The our customers, customers are patients and our customers are situated in certain demographics. Example, a hospital in a zip code is serving the patients in that area. A hospital in New York is serving the patient in Manhattan, probably. So the patients in that area are going to differ from zip code to zip code, their demographics and everything of that sort. So no two hospitals can provide same kind of services and say that they're the same. They have because their customers change. Hence, the problems also change. So we, by providing the right technology at an affordable value where you can scale, and if a hospital in New York can have similar technology as hospital in Oklahoma, that's a mission that can be served. And both patients can be served. And if both of them can cut the cost and repurpose that capital cost back into taking care of their patients, that's a mission accomplished. We do have that in our mind, and that is always the center of our strategy. 
Yeah, Sam, it's so interesting because you can go to a hospital in the middle of the country and then go to a hospital on one of the coasts. And without a system like what you provide, the healthcare offering becomes different. And and what you're really doing is you're uplifting all of the healthcare facilities, all the hospitals to be able to provide the best possible universal type of amazing care by using your system. Now, I want to talk about the hospital supply chain because everybody talks about supply chains in the past few years. And I know that you're really integrated in understanding the importance of the hospital supply chain. Talk about that briefly and how your system can help enhance the full supply chain sort of process for these hospitals. Uh, Yes. Um, So uh, in order to understand supply chain, let me actually explain the model that um, um, your audience um, would understand. Supply chain should be looked at, um, hospitals are nothing but a services company. That means there are people who are coming in who are taking care of other people. It's not a product. The, the, um, if I get sick and go to a hospital and uh, the, the doctor there gives me a tablet, that is not manufactured in a hospital, that is manufactured in a pharmaceutical somewhere. If he administers an injection on me, that is not manufactured here, that is my fault. So it's a services base. For me or a, or a hospital to run that service, I need to purchase some supplies. Those supplies, if they are managed, that will be the biggest cost typically to provide that service. If you manage those supply chains properly, and what there are many innovations that came in in the supply chain over a period of time. Um, they they used to actually keep supplies for the la- next one one month. They used to keep supplies for the last next two years, but they noticed that, hey, that's getting too expensive. Let's actually do um, as close as per day as possible. That means point in time supply chain. That means I need something today. I want the vendor to supply today. That got disrupted during COVID. People started saying, oh, this is not going to happen. Now, where am I going to get all these supplies when all the ships have stopped? That created, and and the hospital sector is very, (coughs) it actually, evolves. They keep purchasing new hospitals. They keep adding them into the systems. So when you add a new system, which is running and operational, their tools might be different. So example, I might be using SAP to procure, and they might be using PeopleSoft to procure. The vendors might be the same, but they're added differently. Now, who is going to procure this? So that it creates a lot of bubbles of gaps. When you look at comprehensively, what is the best way of dealing with it? When you pull the data back and start giving them the analytics of how you can properly design these systems and give them the right uh, solutions, our systems are able to make a prediction on what can be purchased, what don't have to be purchased. Sometimes you make a lot of mistakes, especially uh, if, if if you want to buy one gallon of milk, but you end up buying three gallons of milk, there is a high chance that you're not consuming everything and one gallon of milk is gone. And that happens a lot in scale. And those are the problems. I hope I explain it in a layman's form. Those things, when you pull them together and using AI and using the right ways of actually pulling it together, you're able to predict what is required by Andy and what can be purchased and hence cut down the cost there and fill it back into the patient care system. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing on the life sciences side. It's so interesting in that supply chain you can easily identify what I would call wasting assets across your particular chain and promptly remove them with your system. So that, of course, saves you a lot of money and increases your bottom line. And when I think about it, you know, there are certain equipment and machinery that that are vital to your daily operation, let's just say of the hospital and others that are less useful and your system allows someone through your platform to figure out very easily how to how to sort of parse those pieces of information right that's the that's the main thing so when information gets too diverse and big um, a human brain cannot pull them together you need the right tools and systems to actually uh, pull them together but as we grow, and most of the hospitals were started as a community uh, hospitals. And when they grew, if you look at it, all the major hospitals that are very well known are almost 200 years old, 100 years old. <laughs> so when they have these legacy, very mature, uh, quality-based systems, 
they have grown and survived this long hence they are uh, that is not by themselves they have taken up newer products newer uh, hospitals into their systems when you do that there are certain culture that is built in the old hospital and there is also a newer culture in the newer hospital the new tools that they build in how do you make them work together when you understand those pieces of the puzzle that's always a case where and 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 a mature and a quality based company comes up with a newer and younger generation there is a gap that has to be filled and how do you pull them together how is the data flowing and how can we make those gaps appear to the upper management to make the right decisions that's always the game um and uh, as long as they exist um unless you look at a comprehensive way of looking at these sort of problems and these will exist don't get me wrong but many of the hospitals in the rural areas are stressed out and they don't have the tools to access the technology we want to actually make these these problems will exist but many of the hospitals can't afford them how can we change our business model to scale them at an appropriate level so the cost can come down and most of these hospitals who do have these problems but cannot afford a proper solution can use these things and bring back the value to their um, to their customers which is the demographics in that area I that, love that is the goal of the company yeah i love it i mean when we really just look at it you're improving the efficiency of your clients which then helps them provide better care to their clients i love it we're going to bring you back on the show i mean i've never thought that 30 minutes could go so fast talking about you know real time <laughs> tracing of medical assets and everything else but you make it so clear and you help people understand it from a baseline level for from the perspective of them not being in your space and that's really remarkable that you can simplify it for us and I really appreciate that before I let you go though I want to talk about entrepreneurship I mean you have an amazing yep. journey you've been an entrepreneur for many years you've seen it all it seems like for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show maybe they're having a tough time let's give back maybe you can share some insight about what it takes to keep on going keep on pushing sort of break through the wall and and give a little bit of a of a nice you know sam motivational talk to those younger entrepreneurs having a tough time in business well um uh, the that's always the case right the younger uh, generation um does have better ideas um bigger ideas my my uh, rule number 1 i i tell them as um always respect the problem um they come in and say i want to change this the, my uh, my advice to them would be first let's understand let's respect the problem once you start respecting the problem why is that you are the only person who got the uh, idea uh, is there a probability that someone else got the idea so ideas are easier implementation is tougher so let's first respect the idea that way you understand the bigger picture of what are the things that we have touch second is implementation implementation is a exponentially tougher problem than idea generation right and you have to understand there is a ramp up time and you have to make sure you respect that as well what kind of resources are required a single person army can go nowhere a team what kind of team are you adding and It, you know i feel like it is it is an art to motivate the people coming to your company and make them work on a single goal but it is a luck to employ the right kind of people it is also a it's a gift to have these both together and then able to survive that ramp up time then you'll be successful so adding all these pieces together there is some work to be done just an idea doesn't get you anywhere but respect it and start working do not stop from dreaming but have these bullet points in there so that you can actually move forward. I love it. I mean, I can see that being your TED Talk title, respect the problem. <laughs> and I'm glad you mentioned Sam about the team. I mean, when you look at your team, you look at your advisors, it looks like a who's who of yeah. advisors. You've put together a great great team, people that you can depend on, that you can lean on, that really have this intelligence, this emotional intelligence and business intelligence. So anybody looking at this type of a program to help improve their particular healthcare facility or whether it's a bio medical facility as well reach out to Sam he and his team are phenomenal they always get back quickly and i just want to thank you so much 
for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series today this has been very insightful and for the entrepreneurs watching the show rewind what sam said because there's some gems throughout this interview that you can take the application and put it towards your own business spin it a little bit change it a little bit change the dynamic about it but at the end of it you'll come up with the same type of output that sam has been able to give to his client base by providing a world-class system that really changes lives. So Sam, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you, Andy. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. 